Thank you for watching my video. Today we're going to show you how we cut, clean, and polish our bullet slices for making bullet jewelry. We've had a lot of questions from people about how to do this and you know we want to help people out and do it your own um, and so I thought I'd make a video and show you what we do and how we go about this. Obviously the first three steps that we do we have an aerospace engineer that's made an automated machinery for us that makes it much more not only accurate but it makes it a lot quicker and easier for us too but i'm going to do this the hard way and, and for you those of you who are going to do this at home this is how you're going to go about this so i'm just going to take you through the 10 step process it does take a little bit but let me show you how we do this number one there if you look at the top of the bullet there's a primer now we take this out for two reasons number one if you look at this spot on my arm here, that's from about three weeks ago when a primer exploded on my arm and it made a gunshot noise. It hurt quite a bit and that went through my long sleeve shirt and hit my arm. So it's very dangerous to do it with the primer in, number one. And number two, it jams your machine. It just, it's a constant pain. Now, it is possible to run some with the primer in there, but we strongly encourage you to take it out. So the first step, is we bring this over to a press and we just take a, a, a punch pin and you grab it from the middle, you find the hole in the middle and then you just quickly and easy just punch it out. And you can see the pin goes right through, right like that, so it knocks the primer out. That's the first step. Number two, now again, the first three steps that we do here are completely automated on our process. But I'm going to take this over to the lathe for this step. And I have a little steel insert because of, this is a 38 Special that I'm working with today. Now the 38 Special, if you just stick this in the lathe, it's going to crunch it, it's going to make a big mess, it's going to fly all over the place, and it's probably going to break apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this right here, and insert it in the lathe, and that'll help hold it in position. So I'm just going to stick this in the lathe and let it stick out far enough. Now I'm using a lathe, you can obviously use a cutoff tool like I have set up right here in the lathe. Move that guard out of the way. It's just your standard cutoff tool. You can kind of see it right, right there. You could use that if you want, but today what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to actually use a hacksaw on the lathe. Not the safest thing, I know, but it's really not that dangerous. Obviously, use your gla safety glasses. Whenever you turn on the lathe, it's absolutely paramount. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take it up to about a thousand or, or you know, 1500 RPMs or so. And I'm just going to take the hacksaw and cut it right there. Now we do not use hacksaws whatsoever in our process. Our machinery is far more sophisticated than doing a hacksaw. But for you at home, a hacksaw is probably gonna be the most economical route and the easiest way to do this. And you can see it takes a minute here with the hacksaw. And this is definitely not considered here. You can tell I haven't done this very much. And the machinery we have is so sophisticated. And also pretty expensive too. But not everybody has $20,000 machines in an aerospace engineer to set it up for. And some people just want to have their own project that they do for themselves right from the beginning. So the biggest problem is it goes flying. And that's okay, we'll catch up with that later. Because I just so happen to have a few more right here laying around that I have. So what we're going to do from this point here, what you're going to find is the heat and everything from cutting these is, is going to make it slightly imperfected. Um, it's going to cup it up. Hopefully it doesn't damage the, the top surface. If it does, you're going to have to completely throw it away. But you don't want any scratches. You want to make sure that top surface is maintained. The next step we do is we bring it back to the press. <coughs> and we do a very similar version of this in our automated process. This is just a simplified version. But if you're doing this at home, you're definitely gonna need some kind of press. You could even use a hammer and like an anvil or something like that. 
So you take your slice, stick it into the press, and pull down. And what that's going to do is it's going to flatten it out and make everything perfect for you. So you can see, I'll grab a different one out of here. This one hasn't been pressed, and you can see it's kind of cupped up a little bit right there. This one right here has been flattened down. This is nice and perfect. So from this point, we're going to take all these and we're going to start the cleaning and the polishing process. So we're going to bring this over to the sink. This is where a lot of the work happens. Now, we're gonna, what we do is we tumble things. First thing we do is we add our cleaning agents, because what we're going to do in the first step right now is clean it. So we add about, it's not as much about the quantity as it's making sure that you have both of your cleaning agents. So I'm just going to do about two touches of that, and then a generous supply of this. So we'll do those two right there. And then we're gonna use our stainless steel. This is our stainless steel tumbling media. You use it for, it, a lot of jewelers use it. It's fairly expensive, it's about $15 a pound or so. But it's readily accessible and you can use it over and over. So we're gonna to toss this into our tumbler. And then we're gonna take our slices and dump them in right on top. From there, we're gonna add some water to cover them up. see right there and then we're gonna put the little lid on the tumbler and we just use small tumblers because jewelry is really small we, if you're doing reloading you'd have much larger tumblers but no need for that and what I like to do right here is kind of get it spinning a little bit this way before I put it in the tumbler right like that and then we plug it in And we're going to let that run depending on what we're, how, how dirty it is, we're going to let it run from anywhere from, oh, half an hour to four hours, depending on what you're actually you're cleaning. So that's the first step. I will come back to you in a few minutes after these have ran for a little bit. Okay, we're back. These have been tumbling for a while. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to unplug the tumbler and take these out and open this up. So you're gonna see it's gonna be really sudsy in here. So I gotta wash and clean all this up. Wash that off. And then what I do, I've got a screen and I pour this into the screen so it collects everything. And then it's a constant cleanup process here. And this is how I clean them. I'm just washing out all the detergent we used and all the cleaning agents. And I have a screen set up in the bottom of the sink too, so anything that does actually fly out will get caught and I'll catch it later. But usually I don't lose very much. Spend a nice amount of time here and get this nice and clean. Just like that. Now what I do, I've got this nifty little device here I got set up. And you can see here, it's all mixed in together right there. Now I could go through and take my time and pick all those out. But I have a much faster way to do this. I dump them into the screen, this is the specialty size. And just shake it nice and easy. And you can see that's they're completely cleaned at this point. Now from here, we grab a different screen and we toss them in here. 
Now, we're completely done with the cleaning stage. Now what we're going to move on to, I'm just cleaning these up, put them to the side because I use this. Another minute here. Now we move on to the polishing process. After these, are, these are completely cleaned up. There is no gunk, there's no grime, there's no nothing on these. But we need, still need to polish them so they shine nice and bright when our customers get them. So what I'm doing here, step one of the, of the, the polishing process, this is so it allows it to polish. We actually toss these in an acid for a couple seconds. And you'll see, this is just an acid bath. I kind of toss them in there and run them around a little bit. This just cleans them up. Now I gotta be really careful I don't get this on my hands because it's not gonna be a good thing. So I clean those up and then I put the lid right back on this immediately. And then I take this and I rinse them off again. Just like that. Now, they're, now they'll be a lot easier to take the polish. So what I do here, hang on, I'm sorry, I dropped my screen in behind here. So I toss them into a larger screen. And then I apply the pre-polish, which is another similar solution. It's not a silicon base though, but our pre-polish solution helps out with getting them ready so that the actual polish will take a lot easier. And I'm just tossing it in there. Cleaning it out a little bit. And then again, tossing my lid right back on. This one smells a little bit. What I do there, and then I transfer them to another screen. You'll see why in a second here. At this point, I take it to a dryer. And I just kind of do a low heat, all right up from underneath them there. And this is going to completely dry them out, get all the water off of them. All any of the minerals or anything. If you don't dry it like this, what happens is you get some mineral spots that show up, and they actually block some of the polish. So we discovered that by doing the cleaning and the drying and everything, it takes a second longer but it allows it to take a much better take when the actual, the second polishing phase is, is set on. So it's, it's drying it and cleaning off all the minerals at the same time. And those are looking pretty good. That doesn't take very long. So now we have these all, they're, they're, they're starting to look pretty good, but we we're gonna get that final layer of polish and protectant on it. And this is done by back in the tumbler again. Now you'll see this is a different barrel that I use, even though it goes in the same tumbler. And this one has a dry media. So, and we what we do is we toss it in there. Now the dry media, it already has um, the polish in there. We don't put it in there very often. We replace this, depending on how many loads we do, about every 10 loads or so of here, we actually just throw, dump the whole amount out, which isn't that much as you can see. I can pull a little bit out for you here. But what we do is that's, that's full of the polish. We tumble it on dry, just the same as we did on the wet. Just with a different barrel. And the reason we have a different barrel, I suppose I could wait for the other one to dry out, which you could do too, but it's just so much easier to have one barrel that's dry and one barrel that's wet. It just makes it a lot simpler and easier. And we put it back in the tumbler. And we run it like that for, this one takes about an hour or so is what we run that on. So we'll be back in a little bit when we have this one completely done and I'll show you what the finished, finished product looks like. Okay, we're back. This has been tumbling for about an hour now. So I'm gonna turn it off and open it up. And these are gonna be, this is the finished product. It's gonna be all mixed in with our media. So again, we're going to toss it into the separating container. If you're going to do very many of these, make sure you've got the right screens and everything set up. It saves a lot of time. There's 
just a little bit of hand sorting at the end to get just a few of those last pieces out there. But you can see these are beautifully polished pieces at this point. They're absolutely perfect. They've got a nice shine, a nice finish on them, and they're ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understand that we have very expensive equipment that do the first three steps of what we do here. And I'm happy to show everybody what and how we do this. I'm, sure you, I'm happy to show you our 10 step process, but obviously I'm not gonna give away my secrets. Um, it is, it's a family business and it's very uh, important to us. But we do want you to see exactly when you're buying from us, what you're getting, and and exactly how it's gone through because the last of the seven steps that I show you to do today are exactly how we go about polishing and cleaning and all of that. So you can check out and you can buy from us at wholesalebulletjewelry.com. Take a look at the site, take a look at all of our selection, Give, send us an email if you have any questions, please. And thank you very much for taking your time to watch our video today.